Welcome back into the Talmi Shorts. You know that word Talmi is a Hebrew word, which means a true disciple who desires to be with the rabbi Jesus is. And according to the word of God in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, he says, whoever claims to live in him ought to walk as Jesus did. We welcome you back into the Talmi Shorts. And today uh, we want to look at this issue. Does life have purpose? Does anything have purpose? Well, in fact, everything has a purpose. Now, you and I may not understand what that purpose is, but everything does have a purpose. Let me draw your attention to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and that's a long passage, but it's an important passage. So open your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and look at this verses 9 to 22. Verses 9 to 22, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Notice what he says, starting in verse 9. What benefit is there for the worker from that which he labors? I have seen the task which God has given the sons of mankind with which to occupy themselves. God set eternity in the heart of mankind. This is what he's talking about. He has made everything appropriate in its time. He has also set eternity in their heart without the possibility that mankind will find out the work which God has done from the beginning, even, even to the end. I know that there is nothing better for for them to than to rejoice and to do and to do good in one's lifetime. Moreover, that every person who eats and drinks sees good in all his labor, this is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will remain forever. There is nothing to add to it and there is nothing to take from it. And God has so worked that people will fear him. That which is what is what has already been and that which will be has already been and God seeks what has has passed by. Furthermore, I have seen under the sun that in the place of justice, there is wickedness and in the place of righteousness, there is wickedness. I said to myself. God will judge the righteous and the wicked for a time for every matter and for every deed is there. I said to myself regarding to the sons of mankind, God is testing them in order for them to see that they, for, I'm, I'm sorry, for them to see that they are as animals, they to themselves. For the fate of the sons of mankind and the fate of animals is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. Indeed, they all have the same breath, and there is no advantage for mankind over animals, for all is futility. And all, all go to the same place, all came from the dust, and all will return to the dust. Who knows that the spirit of the sons of mankind ascends upward, and the spirit of the animal descends downward to the earth? I have seen that nothing is better than when a person is happy in his activities, for that is his lot. For who will bring him to see what will occur after him? Now, that was a long passage, but I want to focus in on verse 17. Look what he said. The writer says this, I said to myself, God will judge both the righteous man and the wicked man for a time for every matter and for every deed is there. We've had this problem for eons and eons of years of asking the question, does life have meaning? Does work have meaning? Does anything have meaning? And I was, and I would submit to you that everything does have meaning. Think about the progression of this question. Does anything have meaning? In the ancient world, the primary concern of philosophers was the nature of reality and the essence of things. We call this metaphysics. Since the ancient pagans rejected the truth that God created the world out of nothing, they sought to understand the world in terms of itself. Eventually, this investigation broke down, since no one could explain how the presumed oneness of all the things could be reconciled with the evident, with the evident diversity of the things in the world. So this broke down. And then when the pagans thought when the pagan thought revived in the modern world, it shifted its attention to the problem of knowledge. Knowledge. We call this epistemology. It's the word knowledge. How is it possible to know anything? Was the question that became the question. And the biblical answer is that God designed the man, the mind of man, his mind to understand him and the world that surround him. And that and that the Spirit of God works with our minds to give us knowledge. Well, rejecting this answer, okay, the early humanists tried to imagine ways in which the data from the world enter into the mind of God. Okay, I'm sorry, into the mind of man. 
Eventually, this investigation also broke down one after another after another. Every single philosophical approach to understanding the world around us and its meaning just kept breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. Eventually, this investigation broke down since there seemed no way to explain how man knows anything. And in fact, it may be that all the knowledge is mere illusion and insanity. Huh. Welcome to the educated bunch that are out there. And then in the 19th century, philosophers, they shifted their attention to the question of the philosophy of history. And under the influence of Christianity, they accepted the notion of a linear time and destiny. But they rejected the idea that history was an unfolding plan of God. Eventually, their investigation broke down because they had no reason to assume the truth of linear time and destiny. Then we come to the 20th century. Okay? And 20th century philosophy returned to the concerns expressed in the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay? What is man and what is the meaning of human life? Wow. 2,000 years later, we're still asking the question, what is man and what's the meaning of human history? Martin Heidegger, okay, in his book Sein und Zut, okay, or in, in translated from the German Being and Time, Being and Time, said that the man experiences a sense of living, of having and living, been through having having a living and been thrown into life. That's what he said. Not knowing where he came from or where he's going. Well, that's wonderful. He lives in a meaningless, meaningless and terrifying here and now. That's not encouraging whatsoever. And yet, that's how people come out of all of our universities. Jean-Paul Sartre carried forward this idea, this notion in his book called Being and Nothingness. Ah, there's a title, Being and Nothingness. By way of contrast, the biblical view is that time is moving forward and toward a final judgment when God will evaluate every single thing that has ever, ever happened. Thus, everything in history has meaning, including your personal history. I want you to review this truth, okay, and understand that each person has a history and has a purpose and has a meaning and has a destiny. Not only is our end significant, but all the experiences of life leading to that end are similarly significant. Nothing, nothing in your life lacks meaning. Share that profound truth with someone today who could use encouragement in their faith because you have found your meaning.